I think role models are a complex thing. You know, I think it's I think it's more about uh, I think it's more about relating and getting an idea of sort of what's what's possible and uh, what you can do, where you can end up. And to that extent, I think anybody could be a role model. I think in general, you're always looking for something aspirational. Um, you're always looking for something which uh, can help you elevate yourself. Um, and to that extent, I, th I think I think anyone who has reached the level that you would like to reach, I guess, in theory, could be a role model. You're definitely an, an example of what can be done. Um, so to that extent, you know, if there's anyone trying to achieve some of the things, uh, definitely they could, they, could, they could model my journey. But besides that, I, I, don't really, I don't really see myself as a role model. I just see myself as um, a guy who's just done his own thing. You know, I've tried to follow my passion as much as possible. And this is where it's led me to. And I'm quite intrigued to see where it's going to lead to hereafter. So like high school math is like a very small portion of, 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 of math. Um, as a matter of fact, high school math is, is something called elementary math. And, and that's very limiting. It's incredibly limiting because most of mathematics actually has very little to do with numbers at all. Um, once you've done sort of first year math, which is pretty much a trick math, um, you move on to a lot of different areas of mathematics. And that's where you really actually do some mathematics. So you deal with analysis. Uh, real analysis, complex analysis, which is the idea of analyzing series, you know, uh, series and sequences of numbers. Um, and of course, you abstract, you know, you move away from numbers altogether. You talk about objects, you talk about letters, A's and B's and C's and D's, which represent certain types of objects which have properties. And so mathematics really is a lot more about philosophy, it's a lot more about thinking um, than it is about numbers. And there are a lot of very important areas of, of mathematics that have very little to do with numbers. And even the area of mathematics that defines the numbers, that creates the numbers, that creates the objects that, that, that imply or suggest what numbers are or should behave, actually has nothing to do with numbers at all. And that's pretty much the area of algebra. Um, so it changes a great deal. It changes a lot. And I think, you know, for people who, who want to get into math, you should really wait until second year before deciding uh, whether it's for you or not, because only when you get to second year do you actually see this, the full scope of uh, mathematical thinking. It gives you a lot of uh, opportunities these days, like uh, we need uh, solutions to problem, like uh, the problem that I like is the problem of energy, like now, I mean, here in South Africa there is this uh, problem of load shedding and uh, stuff like that, and the energy problem we know that is like uh, a very important problem, I mean, and to hope for solutions to that problem, we really need the young people who are like uh, interested and talented in mathematics and uh, science or physics. Mathematics is all about problem solving. If you want to become, let's say, a scientist or engineer, you should keep on doing your maths. Whatever situation that you are in, just tell yourself, you know what, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it, I'm going to make it, whatever, whatever, even your friends or your parents that are discouraging you, but just tell yourself that, you know, uh, I'm going to do it. So I encourage students that um, just do, just do what you want to do. Don't, don't let anyone to interfere to your, to your career, just do whatever you want to do. Maths is cool. <laughs> you know, sometimes problems that seem simple can be incredibly challenging, but with enough perseverance, um, they can be surmounted. Okay, let me say like this. At home, I'm the first one who passed grade 12 at home, like at, at my family. So I was so excited when I got like my results that I, I passed grade 12. So that was the, one of the, of the things that pushed me, like I want to do this. I want to be the first one at home to, to be a university student. So that is why I wanted to, to do this. Uh, and remember that uh, this is your life. I mean, you might not be interested in doing mathematics at university level, but some uh, 
programs like uh, doing commerce and others, I mean, people say that you need some mathematics, so you really need to get some good grades and yeah, just enjoy math. For me, I, I, I was studying using NSFAS, which was the National Student Financial Aid for South Africans. So my mom is a, is a domestic worker, so she didn't afford for me to, like, she didn't afford to pay the university fees for me. So I applied for the, for the loan so that I can further my studies. Then after that, I used a scholarship, which is NRF. I heard about AIMS from a friend, then I applied at AIMS. Then I also got accepted at AIMS with my diploma. Not, because most of people, they, they got accepted with degrees, and, but I got accepted with diploma. That was awesome as well for me. I never chose uh, uh, mathematics or physics uh, just to get a good job or in whatever, but it was just like something that I like to do. Not everybody in my school enjoyed mathematics. Maybe they didn't see it as useful or they found it very difficult. But I thought it was so strategic and logic and I always enjoyed it. Uh, I was self-motivated actually, yeah. And I had like two friends who were really like interested in mathematics and science in general and we like, sort of like used to study together and motivate each other and so on. So I like to say that, uh, yeah, you need to have some friends and if you don't have friends, you need to be self-motivated. When I was in high school and then I began to have this self-motivation and uh, like thinking about what am I going to do after finishing high school. I mean, I think I was lucky enough to ask myself that question while I was in high school. Like, and then I was also like to have like, uh, I mean, the best teacher in my life, which was my high school teacher in mathematics, like when I was doing from five and it was late, but it was like, that was the turning point of my life. Yeah. I had a really great math teacher as well in primary school. She taught us how to add sort of relatively small numbers, you know, like 10 and 20 and whatever. And then she just made the numbers bigger, you know, so she made it 100 and 200 and 300 and I remember there was a particular example where she wrote like this massive number it must have been like 10 million or something and she just illustrated the idea that actually if you can add small numbers you can add large numbers as well um, and that seemed powerful I think that's when I sort of realized like this thing is it's sort of very powerful it's sort of a big deal you can apply it to so many different things because there we were learning you know twos and threes and fours and all of a sudden we were dealing with millions and it just immediately sort of clicked, you know, like this is the point, like you, you learn these special cases and then you apply them to more advanced ideas. So I guess even back then, we were sort of exposed to a more abstract way um, of, of looking at math. I would definitely encourage people to go into the STEM direction, the science, technology, engineering or mathematics. It is so useful, especially in our country. The other thing which is quite important is to understand that Fields have layers, you know, very much like I've said, math is pretty much philosophy, but physics, engineering, statistics are pretty much math. And math in and of itself has two main branches, which is the pure math, which is most of what is done in high school, and applied math, uh, which is a lot more like physics or statistics, which focuses more with taking mathematical ideas and applying them in real context. As a matter of fact, many of the great inventions probably in the past century, have fundamentally been based on mathematical thinking. Uh, such things like the computer was almost completely a mathematical invention. Um, if you think of anything, uh, anything even more recent, much of the software that's written on computers is very mathematical. Um, even if you think about something more abstract like Facebook, uh, Facebook uses graph theory, which is an area of pure math actually. Um, to actually define the relationships between people, uh, your friends, so you, that, that's what they call a graph, the social graph. It's actually a direct, um, direct reference to graph theory and the shape and the definition of your network of friends. But more than that, if you look at the actual thing that Facebook does, you know, it somehow figures out 
what you like and it recommends posts and it, and it generates new posts. That is pretty much just statistics, um, which again is applied math, which again is, is, is math. Um, so m much of the world that we actually live in is actually uh, based in mathematical thinking and understanding it typically requires a great deal of mathematical knowledge. Um, so I feel like having a, a high school perspective of math is, is incredibly limiting and one should, always look, one should always look further down the line before making serious decisions about that. My dad was my math teacher at school and my mom is an art teacher at a different school and I wanted to combine these two. I really enjoyed it, I had a passion for it and really worked hard. And I knew I was, I was passionate about business, I was passionate about finance. Um, I didn't really consider the programs themselves. I didn't really think about what I'd be doing on like a daily basis or a weekly basis and what, what sort of work it would be um, that you actually do in those areas. I, I had like this outsider's viewpoint of stuff that I'd seen sort of in TV and movies and to some extent in, 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 in real life. Um, so the advice I'd give to myself back then um, would have been to focus more on the day-to-day. -day. You know, like having a big picture idea is good, but everything happens day-to-day. -day. You know, you have to like live, um, you have to like live in, in the moment. And that's something to sort of consider. Um, many of the things that we think we're passionate about, we're passionate, uh, we're passionate about the idea of those things not so much the experience of them, because normally you haven't experienced the actual thing that, you, that, you, that you're interested in. So I feel like the thing that I did well was cast the net. You know, at some point when I realized that actually, as cool as I think finance is, I need to cast a wider net and, and explore the various other things that I'm quite passionate about. Um, so yeah, that would definitely be my advice. You know, obviously follow your passion, um, because it's your passion that gets you through the moments, the tough moments, which will always exist. Um, but also, you know, consider what the day-to-day -day will actually be like. Uh, don't just think about it like, don't just think about it in, in, in abstract terms. Think, think about the granularity of it, the day-to-day -day of it, uh, how you experience it, how you get exactly where you'd like to be. And also focus on your actual targets. Um, you know, as much as I was and I still am passionate about finance, pa finance is not just a finance degree. Um, it's a role in industry, and the question is, what role do you want to play? Do you want to be the guy who analyzes uh, different investments? Do you want to be the guy that creates the company, that, that hires the people that do that? Um, you know, oftentimes, these things are so complex and so, so detailed that maybe the most important thing to do is a lot of research. Find out as much as possible. Uh, go for an internship, job shadow someone, such things. Um, and then find the thing that you're really passionate about and just pursue it.